What is inside? Bam, my stealth camping bag. So here we go, guys. This is the Four Claz. It's a backpack that my brother wore when we were hiking the Tour de Mont Blanc. I prefer this bigger backpack for stealth camping because typically when I'm stealth camping, I bring a ton more gear with me. Okay, guys, next up is my amazing Frog Togs jacket. It weighs virtually nothing. It fits me really well. I particularly like this one because it's green. It blends in, doesn't draw attention to myself, and uh, I don't really care about it too much. If it gets cut up or covered in mud, I'm not bothered. I'll be honest, I would wear a kind of Gore-Tex jacket that was green or brown or black if I had one, but unfortunately my Gore-Tex jacket options are limited to bright red raincoats. So maybe one day I will upgrade, maybe get a black Gore-Tex jacket or a green or a brown one, and that will be my go-to stealth camping uh, jacket. But right now I don't have the cash to afford that, but what I can afford is like a 34 pound Frog Togs jacket. I've actually done a review on this jacket and the trousers that come with it. You should go and check out that video if you want to find out more info on it. So just looking at the outside of the pack, at the bottom you can obviously see this big tin foil padded camping mat. This is a super cheap, super cheerful, and I think it was 15 quid, might be 20 quid. It protects me from the ground, and so it's quite nice to have something that protects my actual Neolite air mattress from the floor because, you know, when I'm stealth camping, I'm, I'm stealth camping in quite precarious places. But the downside is that it kind of screams that I'm camping. You can't really walk around with a backpack with this thing on the bottom without people absolutely immediately knowing that, okay, this guy's gonna spend the night somewhere. It clamps right on the bottom of my backpack super easily because it's got these great straps that you can just put, shove it through and tighten up and it's not going anywhere. And this backpack doesn't necessarily stand statically by itself, but with this thing, it does stand by itself. So that's why I really, really like it. Just looking at the backpack again, this is a Gossamer Gear medium size, or it might be a large size Gossamer Gear, just a shoulder strap pocket that you can get. This, I bought this about a year ago, and I can easily slot a phone in there, I can put my microphone in here, a pair of glasses there, really, really handy, and it's nice just to have that out of the way. Here, you'll see this is like a capture clip, and it's really, really handy to be able to clamp on my big camera, the one I'm using right now, You, what you guys are viewing me through right now, it's really, really handy to be able to clamp that to the strap on my backpack. And yeah, this is a great piece of kit. It's quite expensive for what it is, but I've had this for two years and it's still going really strong and you can easily remove it, tighten it up, or put it on any different backpacks that you have. And I will be continuing to use it for time to come. Obviously this isn't an in-depth review of this actual backpack, but I'll just mention one of the other reasons why I love this backpack is that it's got these hip belt pockets, which means that I can quite easily, you know, bring my square packets with me on trips and, and keep that blood sugar high and don't, won't get cranky when I'm out there camping and filming and talking to the camera. So guys, on the outside of my bag, I store this weird looking thing. It looks like an alien. What is it? Is it some kind of animal? No guys, it is a waterproof bag for my big DSLR. I always bring it with me just in case I get caught in a downfall. And right now, stored inside it is another dry bag, which is holding out my big camo net. It is three meters long. It is absolutely massive, but it is absolutely wonderful, guys. You've seen me use it on my last couple of stealth camps. It is brilliant. It's cheap and cheerful. It cost me 15 pounds on Amazon. Check it out on screen now, it's an absolute bargain. Cool, the other final bits of kit that's up at the top of the bag is just a typical plastic bag, just so you can stack up your rubbish or anything you find along the way or if you just need to throw some kit in there. Here is my lovely Patagonia backpack rain cover. I've done a little review on this as like a YouTube short. Picked this up when we were hiking the Tour de Mont Blanc and it is really wonderful. Bright orange one came with this backpack, but that's not really good for stealth camping, is it? So I used this kind of dark gray Patagonia one that I bought, like I said, on the Tour de Mont Blanc. Really, really handy. Goes over the whole bag quite easily. It, well, it can be a little bit difficult getting it over the bottom of the bag, the actual mat that I've added on at the bottom, but it covers the rest of the bag very easily enough and hides those kind of orange tabs that I've got. I know some of you will be saying, why hasn't he got like a camo X-Army backpack? I may buy one of those for stealth camping in the future. It would be great to blend in. But guys, I already own about four or five backpacks. I don't really need another one right now, but maybe, maybe I'll buy one of those in the future. So right at the top, I've got some lovely cookware, guys. I've got some frying pans. This one is better than the other, than that one. This is because it's got a non thick coating, um, although that has been absolutely destroyed by Oz when he ate a steak out of it when we were stealth camping the M25 the other day. So the non-stick is all scratched up, which has probably not mean that this is already on the way out, but it's a great pan. You can cook really easily in it. I really like it. I think it was 25 quid. I don't know. It's not super expensive, but it's not cheap. This one I think was 15 quid. I've also wrapped some tape around the handle in case that it gets hot when I'm cooking. This one, as you can see, gets burnt quite a lot. It's because it's got this kind of raised middle that doesn't really agree with most things you cook with. So it gets burnt in the middle easily. Me and Tim burnt pancakes on this a few months ago. And I think the other day me and James burnt some burgers on this too. So I'm probably gonna get rid of this soon, but it's good to have two frying pans because 
I tend to cook a lot of stuff on these trips and especially when I'm with someone else, it's nice to be able to have a frying pan each. It means we can both cook our own meals and it means we don't have to worry about getting hangry, waiting for the other person to finish cooking and then watch them eat while you cook. That's no fun. This is a new little pickup I've got. This is a knife and fork set that again, I found on, guess what, Amazon. This cost me, I think three pound 50 and they all clip right into one sort of piece. It's nice to be able to have a full knife and fork and spoon set with you. Three pounds, it's a great deal. I bring it on every trek I go on and I'm definitely not going to change this. Guys, first up is the Van Gogh Helium F10 Ultralight One Man Tent. I did a review on this the other day. It is an absolutely brilliant tent. Occasionally I have messed up setting it up and it leaked, but that is purely down to me. When you set this thing up right, it doesn't leak. It's awesome. It's just brilliant and it's a lovely green that fits into all different kind of backgrounds, fights off the wind really nicely, and it's just a brilliant tent, a brilliant purchase. And yeah, I absolutely love stealth camping in this thing. I really do. Memory phone sleep earplugs. I'm gonna be testing these out on a stealth camp that's uh, coming up soon. These were sent out to me by an awesome company. And yeah, basically they're a new addition to my stealth camping setup, but I think they're gonna be absolutely essential because I plan on stealth camping in some very precarious positions this year. So it's gonna be nice to be able to plug out the noise, plug out the world and just put in these headphones. But I won't say too much about these right now because I haven't been out on an adventure with them just yet, but I'm really excited to try them out. I've got a cheap and cheerful. I think this is 15 quid on Amazon. We bought one for Oz the other day. Uh, head torch, just because you need light when you're out in a tent and when even when you're out stealth camping. Next up, I would pack one of these Be Your Own Baristas. This is just a pour over coffee. This was purchased for me at Christmas time, some kind of Christmas present, and it is absolutely brilliant. We used one the other day when we were stealth camping in the World War I trenches. I really, really like this because it requires literally no setup. You just put water into it and then you pour it into a mug and it's done. Yeah, really, really like this. And next up is my Jetboil Mini Mo. It's got its own legs that goes on the bottom of your gas canister, a bag that has the actual stove in. On top of the stove, you have like kind of a grill thing that can attach the frying pans. The bottom, it's got this great thing for soup or for tea or coffee. And it's got this really good heat conductor at the bottom. And, and best of all, it's just really compact. Everything fits into it. And you may have noticed as well that inside it, I've got a bag of oats. I think I actually got this idea off Paul Messner, you guys probably watch him too. Basically you get those instant porridge pots from Tesco's and you get one of these really strong for life bags, pour all the oats into this and then you can just put water straight into it and it's just, and it's just great for breakfast in the morning. Next up, I've got this lovely Flex Trail pump. This thing will pump up my mattress here. It will also pump up my pillow and also it works as a light inside the tent. I really, really love it. This is my Thermarest Neolite Air mattress. It's just, this thing's really good. I haven't always been in love with this thing, but with the partnership of this mat, it feels super, super soft and I've been sleeping so much better with it. So yeah, I would highly recommend picking up yourself a mat as well as a air mattress, just because it levels up that comfort. Next up, gas canister. This is just easy. Got this from Mountain Warehouse, I think a while ago. And yeah, I just use this for the jet boil. I've got a North Face beanie, guys. These are like my absolute favorite beanies. I've got a green one uh, for myself and I have a black one as well. Um, that black one was supposed to be for Chloe, my girlfriend, but I have just not given it to her after borrowing it for a trip a few months ago. Uh, sorry, Chloe. Here, I've actually got the pegs and I've got the poles from my tent. I think it's really important to separate them from the tent entity itself because the tent can be squashed down loads, but these things can't necessarily be squashed down in your bag. So if you have these things separate, you can slide them down the side of other bags and it just helps like you compact your bag a lot in the long run. Next up, guys, I've got my amazing, love this thing, Rab Down Jacket. Rab actually gave this to me when we went on their factory tour around this time last year, I think January last year. It was great fun seeing their down filling facilities and they gave us this awesome micro light green jacket. And it's absolutely ideal because you can squash it all the way down to this, which keeps things small in your bag. I've never talked about this. I've got a Travelon toiletry set. This is a bag that I bought from a charity store when I was probably about 15. I don't really know why I bought it, but it's come in handy ever since. Right now in there, I've got biodegradable ba baby wipes. I've got a toothbrush, some flosses. I've got some toothpaste and I've got a antibacterial. The best thing about it is that it's a mesh opening, which means that it gives everything inside like a, a, a lot of airflow, which means it dries quicker, especially your toothbrush and stuff. You don't want to get moldy. We're getting towards the end now, guys. I really don't bring a lot on these stealth camping trips because I don't bring a change of clothes. I wear the same boxes both days. I wear the same socks both days. You could change those things out, but to be honest, I don't really see the point. If you're in the muck, if you're in you know, a McDonald's drive-through or a roundabout or wherever, like who cares how you smell? And to be honest, the less things you have, the better. But anyways, next up, I've got a pair of fingerless gloves. Love these. Chloe's family bought these for me and I absolutely love them. They are super, super warm. They're from Heat Holders. I'm not sure what company or, but I absolutely love them. I have them about three years now and they're brilliant. Anyways, next up, I've got just a typical 
snood? Is that what they're called? Snug? I don't know, a neck scarf thing. But this is the one I wore up Mont Blanc. I've had this for a long time. I think my mum gave it to me. It's got this nice fleece in a bit that I tend to put around like my neck, or you can kind of invert it and turn it into a hat or anything you want. It's really, really handy. Always good to have one of these, especially if things get cold. Next up is a ooh, hey, Flex Trail pillow, guys. I mentioned this previously on my, I can't remember, on a recent trip. Um, I've recently switched over to this pillow, and guys, it is absolutely amazing. It blows up in free puffs, and it is just brilliant. It's super soft, it's got like an outside kind of padding, it feels like an actual pillow. It's got that brilliant strap that goes over your air mattress. Nice to have a bit of kit that just works. Also guys, just a quick mention, I do occasionally bring a tarp out with me. Me and James use one on the World War One trench stealth camp we did the other day. It is a dirt cheap Von Tox tarp that I found on Amazon. Yeah, does the job. Uh, we're not really in the tarp game that much, so it's nice just to have a bog standard one that would just help us stay cozy and stay dry on an adventure. But yeah, we absolutely love this thing. Ooh, whoa. what's this blue bag? Who knows? This guy's is again what I mentioned about the watertight, waterproof bags. This is like 15 pounds on Amazon. I absolutely love it. And inside of here is my sleeping bag, guys. Again, they gave it to me when we went to visit their factory last year. I absolutely love it. Um, I'll put up the, net, the official name of it on screen right now. I think it's warm down to minus nine and it's an amazing bright red. It's really, really nice. Love this piece of kit, it keeps me so warm, especially in the winter months. Next up, guys, is this a spatula. We are getting there. I think this is the last item. Yes, this is the last item of the bag guys here we go these are my michelin man trousers guys this is just a nice pair of trousers that i will put over my main trousers when i'm on a trek they're absolutely brilliant i think they've gone up in price and i think they're about 40 quid on amazon now but you know guys they're worth the money they're the equivalent of a down jacket for your legs guys i really really like them they keep me warm they keep me dry they keep me happy on an adventure the start of every trip my friends always laugh at me when i put them on but about an hour later, when it gets really cold and dark, they always look at me a little bit jealous. I know that for sure. But anyways, guys, that is everything that's in the bag. Now let me have a last think. What else do I bring with me? Guys, these are my Patagonia. I don't know if they have an official name. Yeah, they're just basically a Patagonia adventure trousers, guys. They're for hiking. They've got loads and loads of pockets. They dry really quickly. They keep me warm. They've got these nice fasteners around the ankles, which means you can keep it tapered, keep it cut. Really, really like them. I find that most outdoor trousers makes you look a little bit like an old man. Um, so it's nice to have a pair of trousers that I wear and I actually feel cool in. I'd also bring a big pair of headphones. And then in the summer, I may bring some sun cream. Uh, and even some after sun because I get burnt very easily. But other than that, guys, I really don't think there's much else. To be honest, guys, with stealth camps, I just keep things super, super simple, really, really stripped back, and I find that I have a much happier time for it. I learned when I was hiking the Tour de Mont Blanc that you just don't need everything you think you need. You don't need to be clean. You don't need to have five pairs of t-shirts of blah, 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 blah. You just need to have the bare essentials, guys, to have a good time. Make sure you've got good food, maybe a couple of beers, plenty of water, and something to keep you out of the rain and something to keep you warm, and that's pretty much all you need, guys. Just the bare basics, don't overcomplicate it, and just enjoy the experience you know um this is a bit of a run and gun style review video normally i make these super formulaic and super cinematic so let me know if you think this is better in the comments below also if you're new here subscribe we're trying to hit 10k someday and yeah guys like the video drop a comment and i'll see you in another adventure very very soon peace